what do I do? What do I do when I want to relax? I chill. I play games. I eat steak. You know what you could do? You could eat steak while you play video games. You ever thought about that? No, I bet you didn't. Steak and video games. Uh, you want to package some apps. So, you know, see, now you're blending the content with the joke in the beginning. So things are going to get a little mixed up. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today I'm going to show you how to deploy apps to your Mac with Intune. See, that throws everything off. We went from talking about, you know, the apps to just me playing video games with the steak while eating steak or with the steak, whatever. Okay, so what we are going to do today is talk about how we deploy apps to our Mac, um, there's a few different ways. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over each one of those. So the three ways we're gonna talk about is, are, I should say, whatever. Uh, so we go to apps, Mac OS, and um, uh, this is my other tenant. I already uh, have some deployed, um, but I want to show you starting from scratch. So when we go to add and go to app type, you're gonna see line of business app, going to see DMG. These are going to be the most common. Microsoft 365 apps is the Office. Um, the Office apps, Microsoft 365 apps, right? Um, I'm also going to show you how we can deploy apps via a shell script because with Mac, you do have the ability to do that same way we would do for um, the same way we would do for uh, Windows devices with PowerShell. So we're, we're going to cover each way. Okay, so we're going to start off with a line of business application. This is probably the easiest option because it gives you the most features. It uses a PKG file, which not all uh, uh, ISVs or software publishers provide, but it allows you the most flexibility in terms of um, basically making sure you can make the app available, right? to users as opposed to just being required. Um, it allows some customization. So I'm gonna walk you through that here. So where are we gonna get our apps first of all? Now I will note, I'm still doing this all on my Windows system, but once we go through, probably after today, we're gonna get more in depth. We're gonna switch over to um, running this on our, on our Mac device. Okay, so what I have here, on the desktop is a folder called Mac stuff. And with Mac stuff, we have Mac stuff now. So I have some different examples of apps and things I wanna show you guys. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna deploy the Google Chrome package. Now, if you don't know what you can do, really simple to get an app, right? If I wanna do Google Chrome Mac download, Right, I can search for this and I can find the Mac version, how to install Chrome, Mac, I can get, see, download the installation file and that'll give me what I need and I went ahead and I've done that. So I have the PKG. Um, so let's go ahead and let's do that. Um, so we're gonna hit select for line of business app. Select our app package file. You can see a lot of this looks like doing it with Windows. And we are going to go to our desktop and we're gonna go to Mac stuff. And I'm gonna select my Google Chrome PKG. Okay, let's hit okay there. Now, I guess the closest thing to this would be to me for, uh, you know, on the Windows side, it's like an MSI, right? It's gonna give you the most information from the package without you having to fill in a lot for yourself. But let's go ahead and change things up a little bit. So Google Chrome. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and make, they're gonna call this um, uh, web browser by Google, uh, some description there. All right, so let's look at some options. Minimum OS, right? Um, how far back do we wanna go essentially? Um, I'm going to put mine back to Monterey, these Mac names, man, uh, install as managed, right? So, uh, you know, essentially after Mac OS 11, 
you have the ability um, to manage the app as well. And we're going to talk about that in an upcoming uh, talk about that in an upcoming video. But for now, we're going to leave that as no, right? We're not going to we're not going to manage that um, included apps, right? So think of this as detection rules, right? We have to put the app bundle ID and the version. This is so that Intune knows the the app is installed and this comes with the line of business PKG. We don't have to do anything here. Show is featured in company portal, same thing. And logo, I went ahead and just like with Windows, I went and grabbed some pictures. I have a nice big Chrome logo there. So we're gonna go next. Assignments, I wanna make this available to all users. You can also make this required, right? Um, so that's kind of the benefit of doing line of business. So let's go ahead and create that. And just like Intune, it's gonna tell you it's not ready yet. It's gonna go ahead and upload. All right, so once that hits 100%, you're complete. The app should be up there. The device will sync. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with display link. There we go. Uh, so that's gonna work the same way. We're gonna make that available. Let's talk now about doing a required app or an app off of a DMG, which think about that more as like an image file or an executable um, from the Windows side, right? So that's gonna have, um, it's gonna have the app contents within it and we're gonna have to pull out some parameters for ourselves. So let's go ahead and let's do that with, uh, let's try that with Firefox. So I'm going to select this time Mac OS app DMG. Okay, that was weird. The uh, my Hyper-V server literally rebooted. Anyway, um, a billion years later, we're uh, let's go ahead and select the DMG. Um, so in this case, same thing. I'm going to point to that package. So you see it's showing me different files though, because it knows it's looking for a DMG. So this, this handles surprisingly well on Windows, right? So if you are trying to do this, it does work. It's just, um, so you can see platform Mac, let's hit okay. So you don't, you see, I don't have as many options because it's not a PKG or line of business, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. So let's say Mozilla, Firefox, Firefox, let's say open source browser, and it's from Mozilla. And let's same thing, we're gonna go pick our image so it's up there. Great, okay, so okay, next. Minimum operating system, same thing. Uh, detection rule, now this is a big difference. So with the DMG, based apps, you don't get the detection rule automatically. So, you know, if we're, if we're going to set this here, you know, we got to pull, we got to find these ourselves. So, um, how are we going to do this? So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that DMG file. And I recommend using seven zip to open the archive up. And then you're going to see the folder. So in this case, it's Firefox, double click it, Firefox app contents inside of that right you're going to see an info p list let's go ahead and open this up now this should open with vs code if you have installed if not the text editor is fine and this is just some uh manifest information uh, about the app but we're going to find everything we need in here so if we go back we see first thing we're looking for is the cf bundle identifier well you can just copy that and uh, in here, we can go ahead and paste that, and there it is. So the key is CF bundle identifier. That's what we're looking for. And there is our string, our value inside the string bracket. So I'm gonna copy that, and we're just gonna paste that right in here. Next, we're gonna do the same thing with the app version. We're looking for the CF bundle short version string. Okay, so same thing. And it's right below it. I guess I could have just looked down either way. That's our value. So very easy to get the detection rules. It's almost easier because on Windows, you'd have to install it, find it yourself. Um, so great, we're gonna hit next. Uh, we're not using any scope tags. Okay, so notice the difference in assignments between the PKGs 
and the this dmg we only have required and uninstalled so we can't make it available right so that's kind of the biggest drawback there um but i am gonna make it avail i'm gonna make it um required and i'm gonna basically use my mac device group or i can use all devices and that'll only affect uh mac so i'm not too worried about that all right so let's go ahead and do that and we'll hit create okay and same thing we'll wait for that to upload and when it's ready it'll be ready okay while we're waiting for that i want to take a detour and show you how we can push applications how we can push applications with scripts as well right um so you do want to have some experience with apple shell scripts but if not there is a great github repo that i will link below that provides uh in tune um into sample scripts this is directly from microsoft and they even have a category under mac os for all these all these apps right that you you might need so think about this as like a little mini app repo and uh i went ahead and decided to uh use edge so this is the full uh install edge.sh so this is the full shell script here all right so we can simply download that Oh, looks like I downloaded it twice. That's okay. We'll let that slide. And we're going to go back to devices. We're going to go to Mac OS. Okay, we're going to click on shell scripts and we're going to add. So we're going to call this Mac uh, let's M365 Mac install edge browser. Okay, we'll hit next and uh this is not dissimilar to the powershell stuff again so the difference here is i'm going to go find that script okay i could see it all it uploaded it uh same choices here run as a sign in user no nah, i'm gonna do it as the system right uh in in mac world it's called root so root is basically system and you get some max number of retry attempts if it fails we'll put three times just like uh, the default for PowerShell. And uh, we're gonna set this as required for all devices as well. And after we're done, we can confirm our script and we're just gonna hit add. And it does show up as a policy, right? And that'll just, you know, get deployed directly to the device. Okay, the last app type I wanna look at is pretty straightforward. It's just the Microsoft 365 apps. So this is very similar to the Windows route. So I drop down, I click Mac OS under Microsoft 365 and select. Okay, I can pretty much leave these defaults because with Mac you only have, you don't have the Visio and project options. So you're just gonna click your way through this. Um, you can make this available. I'm gonna make it available for all users. Um, you could also make it required if you want to. They give you the logo i mean super easy right it's really not a whole lot to it so one of the most common apps you're going to be asked to deploy for your mac is just just a no-brainer right so I, I think ultimately that's just a great it's just a great thing i went ahead and added a few other apps as well but let's first take a look at what these look like when they're available so i'm going to open the company portal and click sign in. It should SSO me in as Rick Jones, and it did. I'm gonna go up to apps here, and let's take a look at that. So here we go. We have featured, which is some things I selected along the top. We have all apps, but let's take a look here. So you can see display link showing up. You just click install. It's got my description in there. I already went ahead and installed Chrome. So you can see once we click on it, um, it does say reinstall because it did find it was installed. Okay, I added Zoom as well. Now what about required applications? So I have my little apps folder down here. Um, so Firefox showed up, which is nice. We also got uh, Air Parrot, which is another app I deployed automatically. Zoom, I went ahead and downloaded. But what happened to our script with Edge? Where did that end up? Well, take a look. 
and there it is. So I got Edge. It was able to uh, find my account here, which is really nice. And that was deployed with the script. And there's Chrome. Cool. So we got apps. If it seems super simple, it's because it is. And I think a lot of folks look at, oh, I have to go manage Macs now in my environment or you're moving from one management platform to Intune and you're unfamiliar with it, but they all make it fairly easy. Um, and now you know how to find detection rules inside of a DMG. Like I said, in future videos, we're going to work off of a Mac while managing a Mac and uh, no idea what we're going to do when we get to Linux. So we'll have to figure that out. Uh, stop into the Discord and let us know how you're doing with this stuff. Later. One.